I was screaming, like not to put her hand and pop it in and bring it out. Like when I say put her hand, I mean put her hand to almost here or even more. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Adeze and I'm a YouTuber based in Port Harcourt, Nigeria. If you are new to this channel, you are welcome. Go and have a seat and <laughs> your rice will be with you shortly. And if you're a returning subscriber, please turn up and go and welcome everybody. Go and go, go around and shake their hands. Okay, don't shake their hands, but go around and welcome all our new subscribers into this family, okay? Yeah, so you guys, in today's video, I'm going to be telling you the story about how I, Eva's birth story, okay? Basically, my second child, her whole birth story and things that happened in during her birth that, <laughs> now that I look back, I'm like, that was not funny. That was not funny, okay? My child was actually born with bloodshot eyes. Bloodshot eyes, like when you look at her eyes, all you see is red and black like the white part was red the black part was black like can you imagine that anyway let me just you guys the story before before i get to that bloodshot eyes part because that part is the part that really annoyed me but let me just let me just tell you guys her whole birth story okay so yeah if you would like to hear the story go and bring your snacks and join us and just keep on watching <laughs> Ava's name is Ava, which means life of God, life, the living one. Um, then her middle name is Mesa Machuku, which is the goodness of God or God's goodness or God's good doings, okay? So yeah, while when I was pregnant with Ava, it was just me, pregnant me and Cora that was, you know, together most of the time. And you guys, it was the sweetest pregnancy ever. I didn't really have so many complications. Not, not even so many, I didn't have complications. I didn't have morning sickness yes i actually okay in chorus time i wasn't really vomiting but i was at that i had that constant nausea like i was at the last stage of vomiting without actually vomiting in eva's case i vomited you know at least once a day but for me it was actually a relief to actually vomit that once a day that that vomit you get that complain that oh, you're always vomiting trust me it's better for you to actually vomit than for you to just be like one step away from vomiting two four seven like it's really bad so in ever's time it was actually better for me but after that first trimester throughout the pregnancy i was fine jumping up and down with cora sometimes cora was like i carried cora till a week before i gave birth like i was carrying cora up and down like i'll carry her walk down the step carry her climb up the stairs sometimes i'll go to the market because i carry her everywhere with me even though at that point okay i didn't even have the help at that point so i was carrying her everywhere with me if i go to market with her i'll hold her go around the market buy what i want to buy when I come back home, I'll carry Cora in one hand and carry my load with the second hand. I know the funny thing, it might sound normal because I mean pregnancy, pregnancy is not sickness. But for someone who battled infertility for four years and had a miscarriage, during Cora's pregnancy, I was <laughs> I was very careful though. It was towards the end that I was not comfortable doing anyhow. At the beginning part, I felt like if I walked too fast, the baby, the baby would come out. Like <laughs> I was very, very careful. But during Eva's pregnancy, I didn't even have time to think about myself and my baby. I was concentrating more on taking care of Cora, who was basically a small child at that point, okay? She was, yeah, one year plus because it's just two years between them, okay? So, yeah, I was energetic throughout Eva's pregnancy. Everything was fine. Uh, but as usual, for me, I'm pregnancy. <laughs> I'll be fine, you know. I'll be fine. I'll be like, in fact, then I was telling myself that I don't want Cora and Eva to have the same birth date. I want to have Eva in, in March. And just because um, I got pregnant almost the same time. So both of them due this was actually in February. So I said, no, I don't want them to be born in February. I want Eva to be born in March. <laughs> That's what I was saying. My dear, as the ending of the pregnancy started coming closer, I was like, you know what? I'm done, like I need this child out of my body. Like I became so tired and I, and I don't like when I don't have full control of my body. I don't know how to explain it. Like that's why I don't even like drinking, to be honest. I don't like drinking, I don't want to get drunk. I don't want to have any tipsy feeling. I like being in control of my body, okay? So when anything makes me not be in control of my body, like it really, it really disturbs me. So towards that end of my pregnancy, I was like, this baby has to come out. So what did I do? I got to work. <laughs> So on a Saturday, I went to the market alone. I went to the market. I walked around the market. I bought things for food. I came back home. I made one um, delicious palm oil stew. Like I actually bleached palm oil to make the stew. So when I bleached that palm oil, at some point, I, I think I opened the pot too soon or something. So the smoke entered my nose. I coughed. 
and coughs. In fact, as that baby did not come out while I was coughing, now na God, because I coughed my, my whole intestine out. <laughs> I coughed and coughed and coughed, okay? So after all that coughing, in the evening, I went, I ran. I didn't say jog. I said I ran up and down the stairs in my former house. I ran up and down the stairs almost 10 times. Like I was with pregnancy because I was very energetic. So I run up, run down, run up, run down, run up, run up. So I did it, you know, came back, you know, had my bath, ate, and I went to bed. So like in Cora story, if you guys have not watched, um, the story where um, I have Cora's birth story, you guys should go and watch it because it's almost the same thing. So in Cora's story, um, the way it was in Cora's story too, I woke up in the night and I saw water and I was like, <laughs> I've done it again. <laughs> so I've done it again, okay? So let me just, but let me take my time because in Cora's time, from when I saw my water to when I gave birth was three, almost four days actually, like almost four days. Like I stayed in the hospital three days. It was on the third day that I gave birth. Okay, no, I stayed in hospital for oh, I mean, over a week, but I stayed in before I gave birth was about three days. Okay, I got hospital on Monday morning, gave birth on Wednesday morning. Okay, so I told myself that you know what, I'm not about to rush. I'm going to stay in the hospital. Like, and like I told you guys, when I gave birth to Cora, they didn't allow me to move up and down because my water was leaking. They told me I have to sit down one place, so I couldn't even, you know, relieve the pain by walking about, you know, or doing any other thing. I was just sitting in one place or lying down. Okay. But in every time, I told myself, myself that since it's the same water leaking and they're going to confine me in the hospital, let me just take my time before I go, okay? So I took my time, you know, got ready. That morning, we got ready, everything. My husband drove us to the hospital. It was me, Cora, and um, my husband went to the hospital. So in my hospital, if you come on the weekend, you go straight to A and E. Or if you come very early in the morning during the week, you go straight to A and E, especially if it's an emergency or if it's pregnancy related or you know sickness of a child or whatever. But you know, yeah. So we went straight to A and E. Then ah, madam, how are you? Welcome, welcome, sit down. They did all the tests they usually do, gave me a seat, I sat down, okay. So while I was there, I told them everything that happened. I told them that each time I stand up, that I can feel my water leaking. So, but to be honest, when I got to the hospital, that water was not leaking again, even though I was wearing a pad, the pad was not really soaked. So just like, was I really imagining that? And I said, no, I wasn't imagining it. I tell you what I leaking, but when I got to hospital, it wasn't that bad. Unlike in Cora's time, that each time I stand up, I would just feel it gush out. In this baby's, in Eva's time, you know, I was just, it was just maybe trickles or something. So I just said, ha, that's how I've come again early. That's how I'll stay in this hospital now for how many days? Um... And it, my hospital is very nice. I like my hospital. Like they feed you well. <laughs> Their food is always on point. They feed you well. You know, you relax. You know, they treat you very well. The nurses are very, very friendly. You know, they laugh with you, pray with you, all those kind of things. So hospital is not bad, but it's not just home. It's not just your home. So it's not something that you really want to do. But I didn't have a choice, so I had to stay back. So yeah, while I was there, there was a doctor on duty. One man like that. That's another thing. This was another man. It's not that devil man that came during Cora's time. Oh. This was another man. So while I was there, they now took me to the... Uh, okay, they, they took me to the lab Because they usually take you to... Yeah, that's labor room. They take you to the labor room. Strap you to that thing that checks baby's heartbeat. So they strapped me there and they were like, baby's heartbeat is okay, but it was a bit elevated or something. But everything was fine. That ah, that the way they are seeing this, like, this whole thing that I might not spend. I mean, I might need to either go home or, I'll, or no. I think they said I will stay in the hospital. I mean, they won't send me home, but they said I'll I'll have to stay in the hospital for long. That they don't think anything is going to happen that day. So I even told my mom that oh, this is what they said now. Nah, nothing's going to happen today, so you have to start going. So that was how my husband now took Cora and went home. Mistake. Because I wanted him to be around for, for this circle for Eva's birth, but he now took Cora and went home, you know. So when he took before he took Cora and went home, there was a doctor that came around, one big man like that. That came that he wants to do vaginal exam, I be whatever. I was like, God, which kind of thing be this? First of all, that thing is very painful. People that say that it's just uncomfortable. I don't know. People's threshold for pain is truly different. Sha. Because when I read about it, some, people, some women say uh, vaginal exam is just, you know, uncomfortable. No, it's painful. Like, it's really, it's really painful, okay? So when the guy came and I saw his thick, thick fingers, I was just like, oh God, what is all this? <laughs> so the guy checked me. He then said that he's not really sure whether the fluid he's seeing is actually, um, you know, from the baby or it's just something else that they'll take samples of the fluid and you know go and test it at the lab so but while, while i'm there he'll just quickly do 
and membrane sweep again so he did membrane sweep for me and this thing was much more painful than the one that I had during chorus time because this one, I don't know whether it's the man's size that was scaring me or maybe I was just too tense, I don't know but it was much more painful so now, this, the, the weird thing that happened, the odd thing that happened with Eva Zone was that this guy actually told the nurse that she should give him Psychotech I think it's Psychotech, yeah and I know that from the first miscarriage I had I know that Psychotech is used to you know, make labor go out, like to expel, like if it's in, um, if it's in a miscarriage, they put it for you to, you know, expel the, you know, tissues out, okay? But I think it's also used to induce labor, okay? But this guy did not inform me that he was trying to induce my labor. I guess I'm getting what I'm trying to say. He didn't inform me, and this is a very good hospital where normally they inform me of every procedure, blah, 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 blah. They kind of not inform me. They were just taking decisions as if, no, I was just a dummy that was lying down there, okay? So yeah, he just turned to the nurse and told her that she should, she should give him psychotech, okay? So when he said that, I was just like... But in my usual fashion now, like I told you guys, I don't like confrontation. So instead of me to ask this doctor, like, oh, what am I trying to do? I just assumed that, okay, because I know what he's trying to do, I don't need to ask him, okay? So that was how the guy now carried the drug and inserted, and that thing was painful. I don't know, it was painful. So he inserted the drug and everything was fine. You know, after he left, I was even in the labor room just with the nurses. You know, geez, we're talking about different things. They will go, they will come back, they will check me. How are you doing now? Any pain? I was like, I'm having a little small pain here. I'm having a little small pain here. So that was it. So after he put in the drug, nothing much was really happening. And then all of a sudden, everything was happening at once. Like, you guys, I went from chilling and just with the nurses to I'm in severe pain. Like, the pain went from 1 to 1,000. In fact, for me, Ava's labor was much more painful than Cora's own labor, okay? The pain was so much, I think it's because I was induced, the pain was, hey, 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 hey. I was like, God, why? What is all this? Oh, Jesus. I was just like, the pain was so bad. I could feel that the baby was trying to push herself out. When I'm telling me that, madam, I said, see, this baby is trying to come out. So they said, no, madam, no, that you're not even up to eight centimeters or something. Because they checked me, they kept checking me. You're not up to eight centimeters. You can't push, oh, you can't push. And I said, I'm not pushing. And that's the one thing that nurses have to understand. And sometimes we too, we know our bodies. I know that some women don't know. You know, but me, I know my, I'm, I'm very, very in touch with my body. Maybe because of the years of, you know, opening bump, bump, bump and down and battling infertility and trying to read signs. Maybe that's why I know my body. I don't know. But I know my body very well. I can tell you, sir. This baby is trying to come out. They said, no, don't push. Your mother, don't push. Lie on your side. So I turned and laid on my side. Mistake number two. As I laid on my side, I should have known that, you know, the nurses, because like at, at the end of the day, it's a blind procedure, like they say. Labor, giving birth is a blind procedure. They can't really tell. It's, both of you have to communicate for them to know what's happening. They have to check to know what's happening. It's not like they can just be looking on one screen and know what's happening, okay? So they told me to lie on my side and, you know, just lie on my side. That, ah, and I said, okay, I now laid on my side. But I laid on my side, I could feel the pushing was so bad. I said, this baby is trying to come out. What are you telling me I should not push? Me, I'm not even trying to push. Then I said, okay, explain to us what's going on. And I said, I can feel the baby trying to come out. And I said, okay, madam, please open your leg. Ah, uh, As I turned to open my leg back, the baby's head was already there. So imagine if I had kept my legs closed while my baby was trying to come out. Hmm. Anyway, I said, okay, madam, open your leg. I said, I open my leg. Her head was there. Then I said, ah, see the baby's head though. Hmm. Okay, okay. That's good. Uh, right now, they said, hey, run up and down. Initially, they, were, they thought I was joking when I was telling them the baby's coming out. Then I said, run up and down, trying to wear their gloves. This one was trying to wear gloves. This one was trying tying this, tying that. This one was doing this, bringing this, bringing that. The next thing, I did not push Ava. Like, I did not push. I was just screaming that this baby is coming now. They said, Madame, try. Madame, okay, wait, it's time to push now. That was how Ava just came out. Poop! <laughs> like, I'm not joking. Like, I did not push for one second. In fact, as at when I opened my legs, she had already torn me. They didn't even have to give me any cuts. In Corazon, they gave me an episiotomy, like the cut. In Ava's zone, they didn't even have to give me any cuts. Because as I opened my legs, they even, I even heard one of the nurses say, Oh, I can see a tear. She had already torn me. The next thing, baby flew out. That's why Ava to today is a, is a very strong child. <laughs> right from birth, she's been a strong child. 
that was how this child flew out like literally flew out like a nurse had to catch her like she would have fallen to the ground if the nurses had wasted time like it was that serious okay so the moment i just you know the moment she just came out i just felt that relief seriously if you've not gone through child but you won't understand what i mean like the moment your child comes out it's almost like the last few minutes did not happen like you just feel relieved like no more pain no more stress the only pain i was feeling was just from the cut but i mean the tear wasn't a cut like she actually tore me you know that's the only feeling pain i was feeling but that intense pain in your tummy all those things are we are gone okay so this time i don't look at the baby you know she was looking very okay she was pink on like, on like in um cora's time where cora was almost blue pale this one she was pink you know she cried as usual but not so much she just cried and kept quiet like <laughs> people were like this is your children because yeah i forgot to say this story in cora's um birth story because i gave birth in the world like I said, I gave it in a ward. Even even Ava, my hospital own is a ward. It wasn't like a private room. It's a ward, but you can close off your part if you want to. I can leave it open during the day just so I can talk to other people. So during the day, when everybody's crying, yeah, yeah, everybody's children will be crying up and down. Ava and Cora will just be sleeping. In fact, Cora's own time, Cora used to smile at other babies. Like I'll hear a baby cry next thing I'll turn and see Cora doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say, are you laughing at this baby? You know, that was for Cora. Even though that she will not smile, but you know, she was very peaceful. Both of them, nobody, none of them, you know, were really cry babies. Um, but Eva was a very smiley baby. Like the moment they brought her to me in the room, Eva was smiling, smiling. I was like, who is this child smiling? I was like, like, madam, is anybody I've seen that me I'm not seeing? You know, so well, anyway, so yeah, after I gave birth to Eva, now I forgot to say this. The whole process from the intense labor to the giving birth was just like maybe two hours like from when i started feeling the pain to when i gave it was a lot of two hours i think it started from yeah it started from past six and i gave birth before eight o'clock like it was so very fast so freaking fast from when i started like think from labor to delivery was very very fast okay so you guys after eva came out the placenta took a little while but it came out but the placenta did not come out complete yes particles of my placenta was left behind i don't know how these nurses know but i saw a nurse checking the placenta and she now said it's not complete they have to bring out the rest of it you guys this is the most traumatic <laughs> one of the most traumatic experiences i have ever had okay the nurse had to put in her hand and scrape out everything that was inside you guys i was shouting i was this one was not labor pain or groaning or <laughs> i was screaming like not to put her hand and pop it in and bring it out like when i say put her hand i mean put her hand to almost here or even more like she would put her hand inside and i could feel the pain of her trying to scrape out my womb or whatever my uterus or whatever she was trying to do I was screaming, hey God. I thought I was going to faint. Like at some point, I felt like I was going to pass out from the pain. So she not told me that see, she has to do this. One was not, not advising me that see, this is actually what kills women. And many women that you hear died in childbirth, sometimes it is not even the childbirth itself, it is the aftercare, it is you know, after the childbirth that you know the, the women actually die. So you have to be careful, you have to be sure that the whole placenta comes out i said okay okay but it's painful i said help me but it's painful they say yes we're sorry there were like three of them one was holding me and telling me yes yes it's painful but you just have to endure okay just have to endure think of your child think of your child hmm so that's how the nurse said putting hand to the script out a lot of blood in fact when i stood up <laughs> When I stood on the way to clean up, I almost like said, okay, what's going on here? Like, I hope I, I hope I didn't, I'm not about to die <laughs> because when I stood up, the blood had reached to my back. Like, my from my back, my mid-back, from my mid-back down to my, you know, ankles, we are soaked in blood. This bed was soaked in blood. I was just seeing blood, blood, bloody sheets everywhere. It was such a bloody experience, okay? So, after they finished, they now put in pad. They put in, um, what is the name? Um, what they call the name, but they put in like cotton wool kind of go with gauze kind of part to you know soak up the remaining blood that was coming out. So they had that in, inside me when they wheeled me to my bed to go and lie down and sleep. They allowed me sleep, okay, unlike 
chorus time where I came back and I had to go and have my bath immediately during Eva's time because I gave birth in the evening they allowed, they allowed me to sleep a little bit and they came back to wake me up around maybe 9 or so to come and have my bath okay so when the nurse came to meet me she took me to the bathroom told me that I should try and pee okay so I thought that I needed to remove those things that were completely uncomfortable so she just removed the um, gauze and everything the cutting wool or pad or whatever they put there they had to remove everything then I peed like one bucket of, of pee <laughs> so I finished peeing and everything she now asked me that can I have my bad I have strength and she do I need help and I said don't worry I, I can do it myself so I just took my time had my bath washed off all that e extra blood even though they cleaned me up from, from the labor room but you know the cleaning is not like proper they clean you but it's not it's not the same thing as, as having a shower so now the part that was not funny was that <laughs> when they brought my child to me and she opened her eyes all i could see was red and black i say hey, hey what are you talking about now i could see some white part of her eyes not like it was all red i could see some white part of her eyes but it was more like like an ego smoker like her eyes were red hey, hey, hey. in fact there was a big patch of very red like the whole eyes was not white it, the whole eyes was let's say it looks like it was colored with red then some part was red but there was a particular big patch in her eyes that was pure red i saw this thing i said what's happening <laughs> What's happening? Hey, 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 hey! I now asked the nurse that helped me to go and pee and you know get ready. Like, why is my child's eyes like this? My child's eyes are red. <laughs> she now told me that, eh, that don't worry, that to clear that it happens with some babies is to clear. That's what she just told me to clear. <laughs> I said okay. As she left, I took my phone. I went on Google straight up, Doctor Google. Can you please explain to me why my child's eyes are red? So according to what I read red red <laughs> so according to what i read on google sometimes babies are born with bloodshot eyes because of the trauma of giving birth and like i said i told you guys that the labor was very very intense and short okay so i think the trauma of her trying to come out trying to push herself out is what made her maybe bust some what they call this capillaries or whatever i don't know sha or whatever that happened to her but all i know is that i think it was the trauma of the birth i even heard one of the nurses saying Asking Joanna nurse like has the doctor come to check on the patient? The nurse now said no. They're not like ah, that why won't the man come and check on someone? You just went there and gave the person psychotech and walked away. You don't even check whether to know how things are progressing. Because like I said, I told you guys that it was actually the midwives that delivered me. Even even in chorus time, it was the midwives. There was no doctor there. Okay, so I heard one of the nurses. She was really angry. We're not telling talking telling the other one that that's how the doctors always behave. That can you give someone psychotech? You won't even you do anything. You and you can't even check on the person to see if the person is fine or whatever. Okay, so even the midwife that um, delivered me. She had a private practice somewhere. Like I, I could hear her talking on the phone with someone's husband in her private practice. So she tell the person that see, your wife cannot go home tomorrow. I'll go, go, go and rest. I will release her when I check on her tomorrow. The girl was not like talking. No, no, no. She not said, see, I'm not releasing your wife. Go and rest. Okay. So the woman was quite experienced and she was one that was angry. She was one that also put her hand to bring out the blood. Okay. And she was one that was also angry that you know the doctor induced me without without checking up on me again and all that yeah so that was it though that was how it the only thing that i know that would happen differently afterwards was that i did not bleed for too long after i had eva on like chorus and i bled for nine weeks story for another day postpartum bleeding for chorazon it was nine nine whole freaking weeks i was wearing part there two four seven okay chorazon was nine weeks eva was like a week plus in fact less than a week like a week of bleeding and Jada, all those things that come out anyway so yeah, um, but that was it. That was how the the whole thing ended. Thank God I'm alive. Thank God we were able to bring out the placenta because I heard that the thing is very dangerous. Okay, thank God. Yeah, then with Eva's eyes, after a while, after like, not after a short while, it was a very long time, like after maybe two months or so before her eyes now cleared completely. But yeah, well, she's fine now. She's still the fighter, the, the, the jumper, the flyer that she is, you know. So, yeah, and that was it. And she also uh, was a very happy child. Like I said, she was a very smiley baby, you know. It didn't take much. Even till now, she's still a happy child. But when she was born, it was like, hey, it was very odd for me. So, yeah, anyway, let me just end the story here. Let's not be too long. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, guys. Mwah.